the goal. So you can see now I'm just zooming in the map here for you so you can see what's uh, what's going on on the, on the map here. I can move the tokens around. You can also move your own token so you can take your, your token and move it around uh, if you like. And you can see as you move it, it's also uh, measuring for you. So it'll uh, nice. It'll measure what's uh, what's going on. So there you go. That's pretty cool. So you know know how far it is to move to these various uh, places, uh, and that's sort of stuff. And then if we want to unfog things, we've got a variety of choices. So I can just click on a room and uh, a fog area and un unfog it. So you got the what's going on here. If I want to invoke an encounter, right? I can click on the pin here and say start the encounter in this room, and then it'll automatically add the tokens. Um, for that and uh, and add the the in this case ghost to the tracker over here you can see my hidden treasure token here uh, because we're looking at the dm screen obviously not visible to the players and uh, and so on so we can, uh, can uh, look at what's going on here and then uh, if i want to see the stats for the creature there's uh, your uh, or that's darren's character's uh, stats and uh, we can uh, look at yours as well or the ghost and if we initiate uh, combat you can actually roll for initiative on your sheet and it's going to fill it into the tracker here for you automatically so if you uh, hit the initiative roll at the top you'll see the die score come in and uh, and your initiative filled into the tracker here and then i just click the top of the column there and roll for the ghost unfortunately for you guys the ghost gets to go first right so we'll uh, start the turn order here the ghost is first up in the turn order if i want to you know do you, let's say withering touch. So I'm going to move over to your Ulmer here and withering touch. Uh, I rolled a 19 that beats Ulmer's armor class. So I'm going to go ahead and roll the damage. Ah, not so good on that roll, but let's say I want to re-roll one. What, what's my hit points here? I think I have uh, oh, I've, where's my hit points? Uh, your hit, you, you have a, a total of eight hit points. <laughs> okay, there so, we go. So, yeah, so your character's gonna die. This is a third level adventure. First level characters are probably not, not gonna survive this nope. encounter. So, for, you know, this encounter is intended for four, uh, four uh, third level characters, but you maybe, get the idea. Maybe we should level up real quick. Yeah, yeah, why don't you go ahead and level up? All right, let's see, so I go to... Um, go to your character seat, click on the level area. Just click on level. Oh, okay, we're top of the sheet. Oh, I see. Okay, level. Yep. Level. It'll bring a level dialog, and you can just say add level, and you get the choice of adding another level in cleric or multi-classing if you want. Yeah. Cool. Let's bring up the third level. Nice. Now I need to. Well, I'm not going to say that, but yeah, usually, yeah, obviously spells and all that good stuff, but there we go. All right, so now I'm level three, so now I can survive in one attack. <laughs> exactly. You can survive one attack from this ghost. So uh, there you go. So the ghost uh, now has, you know, 13 points of a damage to apply. So I can just click on your token and apply the damage. 13 it is, and we're done. Or you can enter that damage yourself. Um, and if you hit nice. the, the creatures and so forth, and you see, here, uh, when when I advance the turn or click on your token, it's now uh, displaying your character sheet. And as a DM, I can see all your character sheet options. And the fact that you have some spell slots that haven't been picked is also highlighted on my side. It shows what your current hit points are, all of that sort of thing directly here. How many spell slots you've used, et cetera. So cool. uh, just, oh, yeah, just like any of the creatures, I can see that as the, as the game master, I can see your character sheet as well. So Nice. All right. So that's the basics of, of how the system works now. There are other options for unfogging. You so saw, saw that I, I just clicked on the region and unfogged, right? I can also uh, create a brush here. So let me just create a 20 foot diameter brush here. And what I'm gonna do is within the bounds of the fog, right? So it goes to the edge of the fog and no further, right? And shows you what's going on. So fog region is the bounding box and, uh, and it's unfogging. Uh, this area on the screen. So, yep. Cool. And again, if I wanted to invoke, and if I wanted to invoke this encounter, I just uh, switch back to the select tool, hit select, start encounter, and now all the monster tokens for that encounter have been added to the box. You'll notice though that if you looked at your player view, even though this token is visible on my screen, it's not visible to you. This icon here is, says it's not visible to you. Oh, yeah. uh, and yeah. and uh, and on your view, it wouldn't be visible. But nope. if I click it on now, now it should have appeared for you as well. Yeah, it did. 
There you go. So cool. So yeah, uh, so the idea is very simple, straightforward to use tools. Like I, literally this map was created in Dungeon Fog and imported. And then all I did was, you know, outline the rooms to create fog regions, which is mm -hmm. optional. Don't have to do that. I can, I can just use the brushes and, and uh, unfog as I go. Uh, uh, and, uh, and then you're away and going. Nice. And so this, Are you this, planning on creating a dungeon? I know uh, I've seen other VTTs. They, they created an importer for Dungeon Fog specifically and it, because in Dungeon Fog, you can build walls and fires into the map. And so yep, they you can. You import can. that. And it right, yeah, so you can, does it. you can import the SVG and that sort of stuff. That's definitely on our, on our, on our to-do list of things to do so that you can, you can import directly from a tool that'll do the, the SVGs for you, uh, which is, uh, you know, we'll show the walls and that sort of thing, so. Cool. Yep. So but, I have a question uh, for but you. For now, it's like any image, right? So if you took an image from a prepackaged adventure or, you know, grab one off the web, or if I actually want to search for a map on the web. So let's, uh, let's talk about that, right? So mm -hmm. here, you know, I picked this map from this prepackaged adventure book and so forth, but I can also pick any of the maps we have internally. This is some of the maps I was talking about earlier, this, uh, uh, you know, Broken Guardian, the uh, uh, beach, had, had a way, this is from our partner, Demille. Uh, you can see how beautiful these, these maps are, right? But I can also just go out here as a part of selecting a map. So I want to create a new adventure. I can search the web for a map and say, I need a battle map and I want it to be for a cavern, right? So I, I'm a cavern battle map. Uh, nice. Okay, let's, let's choose that one right now. All right, yeah, that one looks pretty good. Let's do that. And then, Okay, so it's obviously not, not scaled perfectly. Let's just go look at the scale box here. Let's assume each one of those squares is five feet. So this is actually 70 pixels equals 10 feet, right? Because there's four squares that fit in that. Yep. I hit save. And now this is automatically brought in, scaled appropriately. And if we just go unfog it, clear all the fog and add the, uh, add the characters. So let's uh, huddle the characters on the, on the sheet here, you see the tokens are scaled appropriately for this map and distance is measured correctly and all that. that nice. Easy. Nice. Right. And then what so about, I have a question here. What about uh, spell casting? I've seen, I've run into some issues with that. So I honestly, so like Bane, mm -hmm. um, add spell token. So yep. let's see what yep. that does here. So pick, okay. So I've had a, oh, will use this thing. Oh, okay. So does it fill? Fills yep. the area, so I've had you know issues with the area of effects being uh, weird with spell or the area it occupies, as well as does it automatically so when you load the spell token, does it automatically make the enemies roll, or is that something you plan on adding in? So um, so right now you you uh, you choose the enemies that are that will intersect with it, and mm -hmm. uh, and the and the DM can can roll for them. So there's a judgment call as to you know whether this thing is in or out of the spell token's area of effect. Right, mm -hmm. but it's a uh, you know sort of very visually indicates what's what, what's going on here. You can see when you drag the spell token, for example, how far it is from from its point of origin. The point of origin is automatically placed over the caster, so the spell token when it first appeared would be right there, yeah. right? And then you say, okay, well, I can just drag it out now. So I'm showing that this thing is you know 49 feet that direction. When I drop it, it shows the total area effect and so on. Nice. So, and these again, the tokens automatically scale to the current map and, uh, and everything else. And you can you can add your own images for uh, for spells as well. Mm -hmm. so one thing we do make it easy to apply the same damage to a whole bunch of creatures is it does use a most recently used list for the damage. So once you input it in, you can just click and do the whatever you've already done, and it'll remember too. So Full damage and half damage tends to stick pretty easily in there. Yep. So it's click, click, click. You're done. Right. Nice. So, that's a, that's yep. definitely a nice effect. Yep. Um, I have another question. What about lighting? Do you mm -hmm. I, do you have any lighting set up uh, like for say a torch or a source of light or dark vision, anything like that? Right, so the brush radius is intended to simulate that. Right now, one of the things we find about about the folks that do dynamic lighting. We're, we're not opposed to it and sort of stuff. We haven't implemented it, but, uh, mm. but the reason we haven't is that, you know, one, it, 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 uh, the individual nature of it for each individual player sort of 
it ultimately becomes a distraction from group play <laughs> because people are like, what's going on over there? Right. And, you know, yes. it, it, remember this is a collaborative game, right. Yes. And, and people were playing it for, you know, I don't know, decades with pencil and paper and, and no lighting effects yeah. and, uh, and managed to play quite well. So we've, we've, we've avoided it for now and mainly just because we want to keep it really simple for somebody to create their own maps. Right. Yes. Rather than spend an hour setting up lighting sources and and what radius they are and does this character have dark vision or not? Is their dark vision affected by the light source or not? Is this yes. magical darkness or not? <laughs> all all yeah. that sort of stuff. We've basically said, look, you've got a set of brushes to, to the GM has complete control over what areas of the map are exposed. Um, and uh, and we've avoided, you know, creating complex lighting systems or line of sight uh, characteristics so far. Okay. So, there, there's yeah, another I mean, reason here as well, which is that we've put a lot of effort into making sure that we can give a good experience across a variety of devices. Mm. So oh, yeah. the CPU required to, to do dynamic lighting can really push, and even if it, your phone can handle it, the battery is going to go really, really quickly. Yes, it's not a good trying, thing on mobile at all. I don't, yeah, I mean, I also kind of, I like lighting, but at the same time, it, it is problemsome. It's one of the things that I think breaks immersion because you end up having to fiddle with it a lot. Right, and then, and you also like lighting if somebody else spent all the time to set it up. Yes, but if I've had <laughs> if, it- if you're, if you're homebrewing your own adventure and you have to go set up all that stuff just to create the experience, it's like, you know, yeah. good not luck. The, yeah. There is one other thing, and this comes back to it, which is it starts to remove some of the control from the the dungeon master in terms of, I really don't want you to see here yet. And even though, yeah, technically it's line of sight, it's not really the time for that. So it gives a lot more control over what's the storytelling and what's the right time for people to see stuff rather than, hey, I just moved my token and all of a sudden you can see whatever it is over here. Right. Yeah. Makes so let, you know, let's assume that that uh, that this object right here I'm pointing to on my screen, mm -hmm. right? Which I could ping and, and and let you show, let you see it on your screen too, if you want, like where I'm where I'm pointing to, right? Um, the uh, let's say I assume that object is actually an altar that's four foot high, and there's another object on the other side of it here. Mm -hmm. If your lighting effect said that that object's visible. Does, did you account for the four foot altar that was in between you and it in line of sight? Because if yeah. that object is sitting on the floor over there, maybe it's visible, maybe it's not. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And well, yeah, it's going to require uh, time to set all it up and do, and some systems can't account for that. Some can. So it's a, uh, yeah. It's just, but I don't know any game master that wants to sit down and do it themselves for their own adventures. No, right? I mean, spend, yeah. Spend the time to do it. So, yeah. Yeah. So we've and, we've avoided it for now. It's not we're not saying we'll never do it. Uh, we may eventually add it to the add it to the system, but only if we think it actually enhances gameplay uh, in a reasonable way versus the trade off of complexity for setup. Yes. So, well, if you're also adding for mobile devices, it's definitely an issue on mobile devices. I've correct run into multiple times where people just cannot handle um, even on older computers. They couldn't handle the, the VTT in the browser. And yeah, older computers older versions of browsers, older, you know, anything like starts yes. to be a problem. Right. Uh, and it's also, you know, you can bring it all down to the local device and do as much compute as you want uh, locally, um, but it's still going to be quite a compute intense. Right? Yes. So, yep. So that's that right now we don't support it. And that was a conscious choice. Wasn't a, wasn't a, Oh, we don't know how to program it because we do. We're both, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Darren's got a degree in computer engineering. I've got a degree in physics. I know exactly how lighting works, but <laughs> it's, yes. you know, it's, it's, well, it's also like, what do you want to yeah. do? You know, as you're building something, it's a roadmap, like we're, cause it's not a, it's not a fast problem to solve either. Correct. Um, 